Lift your hands and say, I am a part of something great, a place of faith and a great city. Say it again. I am a part of something great, a place of faith and it's a great city. Put your hands together for my beautiful wife. I asked her to preach for us this morning. She gonna come in her own way and give you the word of the Lord. Let's put your hands together for Sister Sparkle. While she's getting set up, you can have your seat. Let me let you know, hang around to the end of the service, you all. Our friends at Robinson's Ribs have come. They pulled up and brought their food truck outside. Yeah, you, you, you get a choice of picking some rib tips or a healthier style, say healthier style. You get a turkey tip and some catfish and some coleslaw. You get some ice cream today, ice cream on a cone. Somebody say, hold my mule. You get all the Pepsi you wanna drink, all the water you wanna drink, say on the healthier side. But we want you to make sure we stayed away because Robinson's is out there and they're ready to serve us, so. You sure you done? Okay. <laughs> he just don't know how to sit down. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, once again, I am always, uh, it is always a pleasure. I do not take this lightly to be able to stand before God's people. Uh, thank you to uh, my husband, my pastor over here. Um, this was a challenging week. However, we made it. We are here, he is here, and we are a part of something great. I don't know if y'all feel that today, I feel it. I feel it all the time, but I feel it today. Do y'all believe that y'all are a part of something great? Let me hear you say it. We are a part, I'm a part of something great. So that's what we're gonna be talking about on today. That is our theme for today. Um, I will pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, Lord. I thank you for being in your house, O oh God, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you give me what to say, O oh God, Lord. Let you be increased as I decrease, O oh God, Lord. I pray that the word will come forth as you would have it to. In your son, Jesus' name, amen. Before we go ahead with the, the message, did everybody get a raffle ticket? Okay. I need you to take those out. I got some things for you. Now, I'm, disclaimer, if it's not your size, give it to somebody else, because I don't have no more. Don't tell me, I can't fit, I can't help you. I have what I have. If you don't like the color, give it to somebody else, okay? All right, I need the bucket. They collected the bucket with the, we, we are gonna see Sister Jennifer. Few. <laughs> one four one. Last three numbers. One four one. One four one going once. Who? in church. Well, praise the Lord for that. All right, let's go talk to them. 185. 185. 185. Going once. Going twice. 185. I don't know. 185. Okay, moving forward. Let's go to the next. I'm sorry. Miss your blessing. Jennifer. 
you got? 156. 156. Oh, Brother Tyler. Come on, y'all give Brother Tyler a hand. One oh seven. One oh seven. Sister Burnell. Thank you. All right, let's go, Tasha. She said this is a good one. One seventeen. One seventeen. One one seven. Come on down. One one seven. No 117. Going once, going twice. They're not here. Okay. All right. She said they out of here. <laughs> oh, we got Tasha. 114. 114. 114. Brother Elijah. All right, check them numbers. Okay, all right, brother Elijah, there you go. Okay, now, we are down to the last two. Come on. Two, one, seven. Two, one, seven. Are you in the house? Two, one, seven. Two, 17. How these folks picking these things ain't in here? I don't understand that. 217, going once, going twice. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Moving right along. 099999. 099. Oh, Brother Andre. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't your size. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Jarrell. <laughs> I already know. Yes, thank you. And last one, last one. 204. Going once, going twice. All righty. Brother Arnell, come on down. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, you might want to give it to your daughter. Uh, I'm sure you're not going to wear this, but there you go. Okay, okay. All right, thank you, Sister Tasha. Thank you to all our um, winners. Okay, let's, let's get into this about being a part of something great. We're going to talk about three things today. Um, decisions. We all make decisions in our lives, right? Um, and when we make decisions, so if you make a decision about a job, you make a decision about your spouse, where you want to live, nine times out of ten when you, ten when you make those decisions, you want to be a part of something good, right? Nobody wants to be a part of something that's as my kids say, that's trash. It's not good. We want to be a part of something great. That's just in us. Nobody says, I want to go join the worst team. Who says that? You want to be a part of the best. So I'm here to encourage you today to let you know that you are a part of something great. First thing first, besides being a part of Stratford Christian Center Church, you are a part of the body of believers, the household of faith. That is, most importantly, the best decision that you and I ever made, right? Yeah. Our spouses, that was, the, I hope we made good decisions. You know, some of us might, you know, might not agree, but you made the decision. But this decision was one of the best decisions that we made. And our theme today is derived from Ephesians 2.19. The scripture says, consequently, 
you and we are no longer foreigners and strangers, but our fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. I'm not sure if you realize that we are part of something great on a personal level as well or on a collective uh, level because we are, we all have confessed Jesus Christ as our savior, right? Yeah. Ephesians, who was Ephesians written by? The Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul went being, from being an accuser of the brethren, a killer of the brethren, to an encourager. So let me act as Apostle Paul for you today. So I, he wrote several letters to the church, right, to encourage them um, in the faith. He sent letters as a reminder that they are what they are, to let them know what they are a part of now as being believers, just like us. So today I asked as Apostle Paul to encourage you and let you know you made the right decision. Tell your neighbor, congratulations. congratulations. You're, in there, You're in there, but don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Continue to do the work. We are all Christians. We can't get comfortable and just say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I made that decision. It goes beyond making a decision. When you accept a, um, an invitation or um, an offer from a job, does it just end there? I accepted the letter. I accepted the invitation. I know my salary. I know all the benefits. I got to actually go work. I got to go do the work. I got the job, but now I got to do the work. That is what we do together as a body. That is why it is important for all of us to know that we are all in this thing together. When I, we talk about members appreciation, we had never really maybe done this before, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember it. I really wanted to, the church to know that we don't do this, Keith and I, by ourselves. We don't. If it's not for somebody opening up the doors, turning on the lights, cleaning up the church, making sure we got parking in the parking lot. Just like today, it's hot. The air went out. Can we control that? No. But we got people around that are making moves right now as we speak. We can't do this by ourselves. And we always want to let you all know that we are together in this. There's no big I, no little you. We are all in this together. God, yes, God has ordained Pastor Keith to be put in this position to lead. But in the end, we are a body. We are a family. I told y'all this before, whether y'all like it or not, we family. We stuck together. And I think we stuck with some good people. I don't wanna be stuck with nobody that's not gonna you know, have my back or pray for me when I'm in need. And one thing I can say about this church, if people say whatever they wanna say about Stratford, when things happen, we in there. If somebody passes away, we in it. What can we do? What can we send to the family? If something happens or breaks down, oh, can I go help? When people need rides, Sister Stacy, our newest member, she walks. She likes to walk. But people are always offering. Am I lying? Do you need a ride, Sister Stacy? We don't want you to walk. But she tells, she says, she says not very nicely, no, thank you. I'm spending time with Jesus when I'm walking. But that's what we do. That's what we're supposed to do. That is us. Stratford, I don't know if y'all really realize the importance of the person sitting next to you. When people are not in this seat, these seats, we should be saying, where are they at? Somebody should give a phone call. If somebody is not here, Myra, I'm not putting on blast, but I had not seen her. You wouldn't know what I did? Myra, I ain't seen you. Are you all right? Are you, not so much, I ain't seen you at church, where you been, you need to get your behind the church. It's concern. Are you okay? Do we need to, you know, come help you do something? That is what we are supposed to do as a body. We are a part of the body of Christ. That is what Jesus died for. He showed us that it was a body ministry. You are part of something great as a believer. We have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives. And that first is what we are a part of because we are part of something great because we are believers. Secondly, now I'm going to talk about Stratford. Um, Pastor Keith kind of did my, you know, my thing with his uh, introduction here. But that's okay. I'll just come back and reiterate. We are part of something because we are part of Stratford Christian Center Church. I know we say this all the time, but this is good ground. Granted, we are not some of the mega churches that we see on TV 
social media, but this church is a mountain in the household of faith. Let me say that again. This church is a mountain in the household of faith. I have been here since I was three. That's going on 44 years. And I know this church is not just that little church on 91st and Ashley. It's not. And I've heard that expression, oh, you go to that little, no, no. Let's, let's rewind. I go to the church, yes, the church. I go to Stratford Christian Center Church, yes, on the corner of 91st and Ashley. But I'm not that little church. It's not that little church on Ashley. Let's dispel this uh, mentality. I don't have a little person mentality. I'm small in stature, but I don't know if y'all know. My confidence is not little. It don't match, you know what I'm saying, my size. Same way we got to be about this church. This church is a mountain of faith in the household, uh, is a mountain in the household of faith. Zechariah 4 and 10 says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Pastor Keith already said it. The work began almost 70 years ago right here. Well, not right here in our other location. But it started almost 70 years ago with the founders and those who carved out this ministry. We continue to build on that foundation that was laid. This is good ground. And y'all, if anybody knows me, this is my, one of my favorite scriptures. Philippians 1 and 6 says, He that had begun a good work, and I'm going to say in us, in SCC, C, is faithful and to finish what he began. What Pastor Baker started back in the 60s, 50s, 50s, it's still going in 2023. And we're just building upon, building upon what, they, what the founders of this church did. Um, I wouldn't, uh, let me tell you this too. I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not gonna lie. I won't lie. I, I'm not a liar. Let's get that clear. I'm not a liar. But I'm never gonna lie and tell somebody something is good when it ain't. I'm not gonna do it. I don't care if you're my friend. I just cannot. If you ask me, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I would not lie to you and tell you that this church is a good church if it wasn't. I would not stand up here and say, oh yeah, you wanna join here if I didn't believe it. It's not trash, it's not. I would never do that. But I know for a fact this church is a good church. It is a good church. It's something that I'm proud of. I'm proud to tell people, come by my church. I don't have nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm proud of Stratford. I don't care who comes here. I've had a, I had a visitor, she's back there, somebody that I grew up with. I'm not ashamed of nobody to come to Stratford because I know when they get here, they're gonna see exactly what I know. They're gonna see it. This church is a good church. There are some erroneous assumptions about us in these streets. I don't know if y'all know it because I've heard some of them. But let's see, we're gonna get the, them straight about um, some of these things I've heard. We are a word-based church, always have been, God willing, always will be. If you can't say anything about Stratford, I know for a fact we are taught the word of God here. I can remember being taught the word of God when I was three, five, teenage years. I know scriptures. And why do I know scriptures? I learned it here. Always been taught the word. We're not a church of error. We're not teaching our own philosophies in here. We teach what the word say. And if it don't line up with that, we ain't doing it. That's plain and simple. This church is a word church. It's teaching the word. Do y'all agree? Do y'all get the word? Amen. You get the word no matter who's bringing it. You have... Uh, Minister Willis, Pastor Willis, you got Minister Emmett, you got the Potters, you got all these different ministers, but they preaching the word. And it's matching up, it's lining up. And what we do, we are supposed to be making sure, mm, does, this, does this match up with the word of God? And all the time, I mean, it does. And if something is off kilter, guess what? All you do is say, hey, 
I'm not sure about that. Let's, let's talk about that. And we do. There's no problem with that, but this church is a word-based church. Second, and I know Pastor Townsend, if he's watching, he will be proud to hear this. We are a church that do things in excellency and in order. We know how to do stuff right. And people have complimented, people that have other churches that have worked with us and have said, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all be on it. Y'all do things just on, t you know, on the next level. Some people think we do too much. Y'all doing all that? Yes. That's how we've been trained here. We don't do things subpar. If we mess up, we might not hit it all the time, but for the most part, we are trying to go above and beyond. That is what our foundation is. Pastor Towns was, was a stickler about that. Decency, excellency, and in order. Don't have, in other words, don't have my name out here in the streets. You know what I'm saying? That y'all, you know, doing some other kind of things, you know, just like you tell your kids. Don't act no fool outside because people gonna look at you and it's a reflection of me. They're gonna say, oh, because when people see Stratford, you think they gonna say, Sister Sue, they're gonna, are they gonna blame you? They know you go to Stratford. Who are they, who are they gonna blame? She gonna blame, they gonna blame us. She, if she goes to somebody's church and she's out of order, are they gonna say, Sister Sue? Um, well, they might, but the reflection is gonna be on who sent her. Oh, that's how they do over there at Stratford? They come over here and just cut up and do whatever. They don't have any tag. They don't, you know, just do anything. We are lights in this world. We are a reflection of this church. So wherever you go, on Sundays, I know we all here together. When we go out in this world, we are a reflection of Jesus Christ, and we are a reflection of what happens in this church. And for the most part, I don't hear nothing about, oh, them people over there at Stratford, they terrible. I haven't heard that reputation about us. We have a good reputation in these streets, and I would like for us to keep that, and it's because of you because you are committed to doing what God has told you to do above and beyond anything. Amen. And then lastly, good things come out of this church. Can I get a round of applause for that? Because I come from out of this church. Good things come out of Stratford. We've had people come, like Pastor Keith said, we've had people come here and have left. Good things come out of here. We've had musicians, let's talk about Marcus. He working with, you know, well-known, you know, traveling across the world with big names and things. He came, and people say, I said, he came right from over there, first of all, on them drums when he was a baby. Then he graduated to the keyboard. Now he just, he came from right here. We don't despise where we come from. But good things come out of here. Don't let nobody tell you the good things don't come out of this church because they do. And it's not because of what we do or the work we do in us. It's because of Jesus Christ. He has put a stamp on Stratford Christian Center Church. And we got some good stuff in here. We really do. We have a lot of power packed people with a lot of word and knowledge in them. You know, scriptures, my mother-in-law just quoting scriptures, prayer warriors, ain't rain. You got the prayer team. You just got the young people. Come on. Come on. These kids leave here, go to college, come back here and work and serve. And not because nobody made them do it. We got good stuff coming out. That video of Layla and Jocelyn with that interview has done tremendous on social media. Everybody looking at it. Just everybody is concerned, you know, like, wow, that's, that's great. And it comes out of, <laughs> okay. It comes out of Stratford, Pastor Keith said, um, people hot. He telling me to wrap it up because people hot. You think I'm not hot? <laughs> I can't believe him. Of all the people talking about wrap it up. He is something else. Y'all pray for y'all pastor. He is something else. I'm, and he shouldn't have never said no because now I'm gonna put him on blast. Now we in, now I'm gonna tell you, he was in the hospital a few days this week and he just up there, 
Keith, sit down. Leave these folks alone. Jesus, I said, if I couldn't be no nurse, and I certainly couldn't be your nurse, because what are we doing? When am I getting out of here? Somebody gonna come in here? He just all over the place. I know they was happy for Pastor Keith to get out of South Suburban Hospital. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna wrap it up. Lord Jesus, yeah, interrupted my flow. So lastly, good thing has come out of this church. We are from a good stock. We've already ta talked about that. And let me tell you the attitude that I have or I want you all to have about my church. People that know me, it's a certain amount, well, it's a, lot, it's a few people that you can't, you can't talk about them in front of me. One is my husband, because that's my husband. I can say what I want to say, but you can't do what I do. Don't talk about him as much as he might get on my nerves. Don't say nothing about Keith Brown. Nothing. Number two, of course my kids, don't my kids. They came out of me. I birthed them. You're not going to go up and down, one side of them come down. Now, I'm not saying that they can't be corrected. Yes, but you're not going to talk about my kids. And for those who also know me, you know, it's one more person you ain't going to be able to say nothing to me about. Don't say too much about my brother. Not too much about Brother Jeff. And you know why? It's not just because I love those people. It's because I know them. I know their character. I know that if someone is saying something about them and it's untrue and it goes against their character, you're not going to be able to talk about them. Now, does Brother Jeff mess with the little kids and all that stuff around here? Yes, he does. That's his MO. That's what he does. But for the most part, I know he's not around here bullying people and being mean to people. That's not his DNA. And because I know him and I know my kids and I know my husband, that's the same way I'm about this church. You're not going to be able to talk to me about my pastor. You're not going to be able to talk to me about my church. You're not going to do it because I won't do it to you. And that's the kind of attitude. Not around me. Not around me. So when somebody, I'm challenging you, when somebody says something, and, and, and let me say this, I've not always been a first lady. I was a member here first. Pastor Townsend was my pastor. And, and Pastor Townsend, I love you, and Sister Townsend, I didn't always agree with everything. And I wasn't always, and I, I'm gonna tell on myself. I complained about stuff, I surely did. I complained about why is we still in church and it's one o'clock? Can we go home? Please, can we go home? I did my fair share of complaining. I did. But now I'm on the other side. I jumped over on the other side. So I know what it is to be on that side. But I mean, those are minute things. You know, time, sometimes we do go over time, yes. But for the most part, I'm not talking about my church. And I'm certainly not going to talk about my church in front of other people who don't go here. I'm not going to do it. What does that look like? I'm down in my church, I'm a part of it, and I'm talking about it in front of other people, and then they think in their mind, well, I ain't going over there, look how she talk about. They don't wanna come over here. So I'm challenging you, if you hear something, or even if somebody here, I want you to start telling them. Somebody come to you, to sue somebody, say something negative, you're just gonna say, I'm a part of something great. You just have to remind yourself, even in your marriage, it ain't always cookies and ice cream. I have to remind myself, I love him, and I'm a part of something great. I'm a part of something great. I stood before God, and I gave these vows. You have to constantly remind yourself. It's not always going to be rosy in here. It's going to be some ups and downs, and all I'm asking you is stay committed. If people come to you with some stuff, just say, I'm a part of something great. It, it'll be okay. We're a part of something great. And then lastly, I'm going to wrap up. I want to tell you about some people who not to be like. We, I would, we're not gonna read the whole entire story, but I'll just summarize. How many people know about the children of Israel? Yeah. We know what they went through, right? So they were a part of something great. They were in captivity. They were slaves. God used Moses and Aaron and them to get them out of there. They went through the Red Sea. They walked on land. They were part of something great, right? Then they got over. And then what happened? 
they forgot they was a part of something great because then they just start complaining. Oh, well, we should just go back to being slaves. It was better over there because we just walking around in this wilderness. We don't want to be like that. Don't be like that. Don't forget. You know what I'm saying? You constantly have to remind yourself. And then lastly, I was a, a fortunate to be a part of the era of the greatest basketball player to ever play the game, and that is Michael Jordan. Now, y'all new school people, y'all want to say LeBron, I didn't come up under that era. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. And Michael Jordan um, was a part of the Bulls, and he built a team, and together they were a part of something great. Some of those key players included at one time or another Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Tony Kukoc, I used to call him Tony Rue Roach, I don't know why, Steve Kerr, B.J. Armstrong, and a host of others. They went on to win six championships between 1991 and 1996 with two three-peats. Primarily, Michael Jordan was a star of that team, and many of his teammates were humbled and honored, honored to have the opportunity to, to be able to make history as a part of that team. However, over time, some people start to question or have a change of heart. Don't be like Scotty. I seen Michael Jordan play before I came to play with the Bulls. You guys seen him play. He's a horrible player. Okay, he's a great player, great talent. It's taken Kyrie about four or five years to realize. He was horrible to play with. He was all one on one. He's shooting bad shots, and all of a sudden we become a team and we start winning. Everybody forgot who he was. The success of the Bulls came from a team. It didn't come from Michael Jordan. It didn't come from him being critical of other players. If anything, that discouraged players. Scotty was number two to Michael Jordan. I don't care how he felt about number. I would be number two if I could to Michael Jordan. He right next to greatness. But then some change in his heart. Now he out here talking sideways about Michael Jordan. You won six championships with him. He all was right there to assist. What happened now? Now you're not a part of something great? Now you want to discount it? You want to uh, trash his name in the media? We don't want to be like that. Don't be like Scotty. We are part of something great. We're going to uphold the name, this church. And even if you leave, don't be like Scotty. We are a part of something great. I am happy and pleased to be able to part, be a part of this church with each and every one of you. I don't count it as a, um, I count this as a joy to be a part of one of the greatest church churches in Chicago. We are a beacon on 91st and Ashley. We don't have no little mentality. We are busting out of the walls and people are beginning to know more about Stratford Christian Center Church. I thank you, I love you all, and I hope on today you feel appreciated and know that you are a part of something great, amen.